Now, the risk of material misstatement basically says, what is it? And again, this is purely about management and the financials and, and what they've done. What is it about this that could go wrong? And this is where your two levels come in, which is your assertion, also known as your account balance. Um, and your financial statement level is also known as your overall. Okay, so this is one of those things that we kind of go, uh, which is the separation here? Like, what goes where? Now, here's a really simple example, and I, I you know, <laughs> very doff example, but the doff examples work because, well, they work historically. That's my understanding. Okay, so I send you into an audit, and I say to you, um, I need you. To go and do the risk assessment. I need you to go scratch around and find out what's going on. Okay. So um, you go to, to, to the client and you say, um, I'm going to audit and, and let's pretend, you know, that you're auditing sales, cost of sales and payroll, for example. I don't know why I always use these. Okay. So I'm just going to limit the whole set of financial statements to sales, cost of sales and payroll for now. Okay. So these are the departments you know, that, that you're going to audit. And that makes up you know, that makes up your financial statement. Obviously, there's a ton more, but we're just going to focus on that for the purposes of this discussion, right? So you go into the, the client and you start asking them about sales, cost of sales, payroll, what's going on in your business, da, da, da. You get your understanding. This is part of your risk assessment procedures. How do I? So you go and talk to management. You look at some stuff. You look at pre-engagement activities. What happened? What did I get from the pre-engagement activities? Anything indicate something's wrong? Da, da, da. Fine. Okay. As you scratch around and as you talk, you realize that you meet who I call Bob. Always Bob. I don't know why. So you meet Bob and Bob works as a sales clerk. And Bob is like really stupid. Like Bob is really stupid. Like really, really stupid. And you go like, dude, you know, he doesn't like, he still doesn't quite know where to turn his calculator on. Uh, you know, Bob is really, really stupid. Now, I want you to think of risks as um, little warning lights that go on in your head that basically, you know, when you find a risk of material misstatement, you're switching on the little alarm and you're going, this is going to be a problem, right? So um, if Bob is responsible or if Bob is stupid, we, we kind of go, is this going to impact the fair presentation of sales? Like, does Bob's stupidity impact the free presentation of sales, right? So then we kind of go, okay, what does Bob actually do? If Bob's entire purpose is to calculate the amount on invoices, let's say his entire job is limited to calculating the amount on invoices, does Bob's stupidity have an impact on the fair presentation of sales? Yes, it does, right? Can we limit and isolate the damage that he's going to do. You know, is his stupidity going to impact cost of sales? No, because he has nothing, thank goodness, he has nothing to do with cost of sales. So when it comes to sales, we, we find Bob and we go, oh, okay, this is a problem. So we flick on the warning light, okay? And there's like a little alarm. When it comes to sales, there's Bob, there's a little alarm, be careful here, yeah, this is a problem. Then we go and look and we do our risk assessment for cost of sales and we go, what's happening in cost of sales? Does Bob impact cost of sales? Like, is there anything that he could do to damage cost of sales? Oh, thank goodness. No, right? Not a problem. Then we go to payroll and go, is there anything that Bob does that could impact um, the fair presentation of payroll? And you go, okay, no, because he's got nothing to do with it. Obviously, we're going to go and look at Bob's pay slip because all of us want to know what this idiot actually earns. <laughs> okay. But it doesn't actually impact the fair presentation of anything else, right? So I kind of talk about it, a simple way to think about it is, can you isolate the damage that this thing is likely to cause? Like, can you isolate the damage, right? So when I look at this, I go, yes, I can. If the answer to this is yes, then this is an assertion or an account balance level risk. If the answer is no, I can't, then that is an AFS level risk, right? So if you can say, I can box this, I can switch the little warning light on for sales, but when I get to cost of sales, 
I can switch the light off. And when I get to payroll, I can switch the light off. Then that is an assertion level risk. Okay. Now, the next question we ask is, can we further identify the impact that Bob is going to have, right? So we know Bob's going to stuff up sales. Sweet. But what in sales is he going to stuff up? Like, how is he going to? I don't want to audit the whole of sales um, and change the way I audit the whole of sales because of Bob. Can we isolate this damage even further? Now we go, okay, what does Bob actually do? Okay, Bob calculates the amount on the invoice, right? And we have these beautiful things called assertions. And we kind of say that assertions are our categories. And I don't want to go into like massive assertion discussions here. Your assertions are the categories of everything that could go wrong. Okay, so as auditors, we've kind of said like there are a million things that could go wrong with a fair presentation, like a trillion things. How on earth do we limit this? Like how do we categorize it? Okay, great, we create assertions. And I don't want to go into where they come from now, um, but we've created assertions as like this is the sum total and everything that co could possibly go wrong is in one of these categories, right? So we have assertions. Now, Bob deals with the transactions. So we're looking at transactional assertions. If his responsibility is to calculate the amount on the invoice, then this is going to have an impact on the accuracy of sales, right? Why? Because if the amount on the invoice is wrong, that means that it's going to impact accuracy. Okay, this doesn't impact cutoff because it's got nothing to do with when the transaction happened. It doesn't have to do with completeness because it's got nothing to do with the transaction not being recorded. It doesn't have to do with occurrence because it's not about the validity or actually whether or not this thing happened. It's not about the classification because we're not arguing that Bob has any impact in saying, well, actually, this is a cost of sale instead of a sale. We're just saying the amounts and details of this invoice is going to be wrong. Okay, so step number one, can we isolate the damage to a specific account balance? Yes, we can. Assertion level. Let's isolate this a little bit further. Can we identify what stuff this is going to affect? Okay, it's going to affect the accuracy of the sale. Great. Now we have our assertion level risk. And I'll get to the communication of this later. Okay, but this is our assertion level risk. The fact that Bob is stupid is going to impact the accuracy of sales. That's isolated, okay? So let's say that that's year one of the audit. Let's say you now go into year two, you come back for the second year of the audit and you go, okay, fine. I know that Bob is fairly stupid and, and you know, we understand that our understanding of, of the client last year and Bob still is here, pretty, and he still works in sales. And he still calculates the amount on the invoice, but whatever, I don't know, they were stupid. They gave him another job um, and his job was also to, um, to record the invoice at all, for example. Okay, So he gets to record the invoice as well. He gets to capture the invoice as well. So they've added onto his task. Okay, question number one, can we isolate the damage that Bob is responsible for. Yes, right? So therefore, it's an assertion level risk, right? He is still only working with sales, okay? Still only working with sales, so therefore, we can isolate the damage of the effect. But can we categorize and is isolate it even further? Um, the fact that he's calculating the amount on the invoice means that he's going to be in impacting accuracy. The fact that he's recording, he's the one responsible for recording the transactions at all. Now I'm going, okay, wait a minute. What impact would this have if he stuffs this up? Well, if he's responsible for recording stuff, he's a bit stupid, so he's probably going to forget to record stuff, which means that there are sales that may be happening and they're not being recorded. Hey, presto, he's also going to be responsible for completeness. So now, um, the fact that Bob is stupid and works in the sales department, he's going to impact the accuracy of sales and the completeness of sales. Is this still an assertion level risk now that I've got two assertions in the same uh, account balance? Yes, it is. Why? Because I can still isolate the damage. An assertion level risk is not something that only affects one area. It's, I can isolate it. It doesn't affect the financials as a whole. I can isolate it and say, this thing affects that and it affects that. Fine. 
Then we go back for year three. We go back to the audit for year three. And Bob is still calculating the invoice and he's still uh, recording stuff. That's great. So that has the same impact as last year. But again, because this company is really stupid and they're a sucker for punishment, they have now given Bob an additional job um, and he now works in cost of sales as well, right? So they've now got him in cost of sales and he's also calculating, um, he's calculating purchases in cost of sales, right? Now, question number one, can you isolate the impact of the damage that Bob is going to have? Okay, this is where students start getting a little confused because they're saying, oh, okay, now there's more than one account balance. But the answer is still yes. Why? Because I can point to the damage. Bob is going to impact sales and Bob is going to impact cost of sales. I can still isolate the impact of the damage. He's going to affect the accuracy of sales. He's going to affect the completeness of sales and he's going to affect the accuracy of purchases. So now my indicator, when it comes to my risk, my indicator is Bob is stupid, right? So in the case study, et cetera, you're gonna go, Bob is stupid and he works in sales, right? Bob is stupid. My indicator, that's the problem. But that one indicator is now, that indicator is responsible for a risk that says, uh, the accuracy of sales is at risk because Bob is stupid the recording or the completeness of sales is at risk because Bob is stupid and the accuracy of cost of sales is at risk because Bob is stupid. If we go to payroll and go, does Bob have any impact here? We're still going no. Yeah, not. So it's isolate. We can isolate this, right? Then we go to year four. And again, massive sucker for punishment, like incredibly stupid company. They have promoted Bob to financial manager. Somehow, he was very charming, whatever the case was. Slept his way to the top, I don't know. But they promoted Bob to financial manager. Now your question is, we've got sales, um, we've got cost of sales, and we've got payroll, right? Now again, if we think about risks as switching on little alarms, right? The question is, the fact that Bob is now the financial manager, can we isolate the impact of the damage. Can we say Bob is going to be responsible for stuffing up uh, this area or this area, but not that area? Now the answer is no. Therefore, it's a financial statement level risk. Why? Well, because when I look at sales, I'm asking myself, like, what could possibly go wrong with sales? Well, whatever's happening in here, that's one thing. But the problem is we have a financial manager that's really stupid. And there's no question that the fact that he's stupid and responsible and, you know, for the financials, like, as a whole, means there's a very good possibility that he has stuffed up sales or people have reported to him and he's done stuff wrong, whatever the case is. We know he's stupid, we know he makes mistakes and the sales department reports to him, so chances are there's, there's a stuff up there, okay? We don't know whether or not he has stuffed it up, but we know that he's stupid and, and he does stuff, stuff up, so that's a problem. Now I go to cost of sales, so I've got my little warning light on. I go to cost of sales and I go, is there a possibility that Bob can impact cost of sales? Yes, absolutely. No question, because it's part of his responsibilities. What about payroll? Yes, absolutely, because it's part of his responsibilities. So now the question is, if I look at this, can I isolate the impact of the damage? Well, in reality, if this is the sum total of my financial statements, then the answer is, um, Bob could be responsible for stuffing up the financial statements as a whole. There is nothing in the company that we can really pick out and go, okay, Bob's not going to impact this. You know, like that's not going to be, you know, that's not going to be a problem. He's responsible for the financial statements as a whole. So now it's basically like saying we've switched on a warning light for the entire audit. Now you'll say to your audit clerks, guys, everything you touch, everything you touch on this audit, you've got to be aware of Bob in the back of your mind. If you're auditing sales, cost of sales, payroll, inventory, assets, whatever the case is, you've got to keep Bob in the back of your mind, right? Because Bob's stupid. So it's switching on a warning light that you never switch off, right? These are risks at financial statement level risk. You cannot create or you cannot uh, isolate it and talk about it as uh, a line item 
an account, an assertion, because it's like as a whole, I don't know what is affected. I don't know what is affected, but as I go through the entire audit, I've got to keep in mind, Bob is stupid and could have impacted anything. This could be anywhere. That is the difference between financial statement level risks, the financial statements as a whole, and account balance level risk or assertion level risk, where I can isolate the impact of the damage. Now, the balance and the challenge is kind of going, okay, Vaughn, so if a risk impacts two items, that's an assertion level risk, or that could be an assertion level. What if one risk affects three items? Does that make it financial statement level? And the answer is no, not necessarily, right? One, because remember that for every debit, there's a credit. So if, you know, if you've stuffed up the debit, chances are you've stuffed up the credit. So generally, there's at least two, <laughs> generally, there's at least two things wrong. Okay. If you've stuffed up the cost of sale, then you'll stuff up the cost of the inventory. So if cost of sales is stuffed up, then inventory is stuffed up, right? So for every debit, there's a credit. That's one thing. And again, your question is, can I isolate the impact of the damage? Or is there a possibility that this thing has damaged the financials as a whole? Is it possible that this could be an issue that affects us as a whole? That we kind of go, fraud is very difficult to isolate. You know, something at management level is very difficult to isolate. So things to do with directors, with managers, with fraud, these are things that's very difficult to impact because we don't know where it's going to pop up. And that is your difference between financial statement level risk and assertion level risk. 